Okay, so this video is going to go over the next uh, number of classes of organic compounds. Um, I, I put these together because uh, they are similar in some respects. They're the um, first compounds we've seen that have C to O double bonds. Um, and I've done this blue line down the middle because uh, aldehydes and ketones are actually uh, isomers of each other. You, you'll maybe be able to see that with that they have the same general formula. Um, and so the only difference between them is the positioning of that C to O double bond. Carboxylic acids and esters are sort of the same. They have two oxygens, and they both have uh, a double bond to one oxygen from a carbon to an oxygen, and they have a single bond from carbon to oxygen. Uh, but the positioning of that is slightly different in each group. So anyways, let's go through them. Um, again, what I said was they, they all have a C to O double bond, um, and that, that alone can be called a carbonyl group. So if you're naming the functional group alone, you would call it a, a carbonyl. Uh, however, if you are identifying it in this case for the aldehyde, uh, you might want to refer to it as an aldehyde group. Um, you could say it's a carbonyl, but to be more specific and show that you know it's not a ketone, you might want to point out it's an aldehyde. Um, the difference for between aldehydes and ketones is that for aldehydes, uh, that C to O double bond is always at the very end of a chain. And therefore, you'll always have a carbon double bonded to oxygen, and that carbon is also attached to an H. So this is always the end uh, of a chain. Uh, that's what makes it an aldehyde. Um, in uh, condensed formulas, you'll see it looking like this, CHO. So they put the H right next to the C to make sure that you know the carbon and the hydrogen are bonded together. Um, the difference with a ketone is that for a ketone, um, the carbon to oxygen double bond has to be between two carbon atoms. So that it can't be attached to an H. So the smallest ketone, therefore, has three carbon atoms because you've got the carbon to oxygen, and then it has to have at least one on either side. That's why I've chosen for all these uh, examples uh, three carbons because that's the smallest possible for uh, a ketone. So the only difference is that uh, aldehydes always are at the end, and ketones have to be between. Uh, two carbon atoms. Okay, If we name the functional group in a ketone, we would call it a carbonyl group. Uh, in an aldehyde, you can probably just call it an aldehyde. Um, structurally, uh, in the condensed structural formulas, we said aldehydes, CHO, whereas ketones, you're just going to see CO in the middle of a chain. Um, here's what the structural formulas look like for those three carbon versions. And we get propanal and propanone. So remember, these are called aldehydes, so really they end in, in al, propanal. Um, for ketones, they end in own. So uh, propanal, propanone. So just new endings, um, but the same basic structure that they've got three carbons, so they start with propan or prop, and then they end in the suffix that goes along with their group. Um, uh, special naming considerations are that because the aldehyde is always at the end of the chain, um, that makes this carbon the number one carbon always. So we don't have to call this thing 1-propanol or propan-1-al because uh, it's really unnecessary. We know that the carbon uh, is always going to be the number one carbon. So this is one of those examples of a redundant number. It happens to be a redundant number with the functional group. So this special naming consideration is that um, the functional group never needs a name. So you never see a 1 with the al. Uh, or in front of the propanal. You just don't have to give a number for it. Uh, the ketones, um, if they get long enough, then you do have to put a number, but actually you won't have to put a number for either propanone or butanone because there's really only one position for the C to O double bond. It has to be on the two. So I put down here, there's there's no numbering of the, the ketone group until you have five carbons in the chain. And in that case, usually you'd see it as uh, in between the A, N, the an, and then it would be like an two own. So if it was pentan two own versus pentan three own, that's probably how you would name it. You could also put the two or the three in front of the pentanone. That would also be acceptable. So if if you have a long enough carbon chain, then you do need to uh, explain where the carbon to oxygen double bond is, where the carbonyl group is. So those are aldehydes and ketones. Uh, one carbon to oxygen double bond somewhere along the chain. Um, carboxylic acids and esters uh, always have a COO. You'll see that if you go to both of their condensed structural formulas, COO and COO. So 
So COO in an organic compound means C to oxygen double bond followed by a C to oxygen single bond. So they both have that in common. And sort of like the aldehydes and the ketones, the one difference is that the carboxylic acid has that always at the end of a chain. So after the oxygen comes a hydrogen, and then this molecule is complete and everything else is off of the, in this direction. Whereas the ester, uh, the C to O, is, is somewhere in the middle of the chain. And so there's always a carbon on, on the other side of this oxygen, and there's always uh, you know, this carbon chain here. So it, it's very, very similar to the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone. You've got end of chain and you've got uh, in the middle of the chain. And so for the same way, when we uh, talk about carboxylic acids, when we name them, we're never going to have to put a number with the functional group because this carbon is always the number one carbon because it has the, the carboxyl group here. So it makes it the most important lowest number carbon atom. So you'll never see uh, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid. They don't require any number for that anoic acid part of the name. Um, esters are going to be probably the trickiest thing that we, we have to name. So I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Uh, in terms of naming functional group versus naming families. So a molecule that has this functional group will be called a carboxylic acid, and a molecule that has this group will be called an ester. This functional group itself, though, is called a carboxyl group. So if you're identifying it in a molecule, it's not a carboxylic acid group. It is called a carboxyl group. Um, this one, on the other hand, you can call it an ester group. That's its name as well. In a condensed formula, the carb carboxyl group looks like this, COOH, because it has that H at the end. Whereas in ester, you'll see COOC. So uh, I remember that <coughs> ester is the is a female name, maybe not spelled like this, but uh, sometimes. And uh, I say you got your kooky old aunt ester. It's the kook group. You got the koo group and the kook group. Um, so anyways, that's how I remember it. Kooky aunt ester, so COOC, that's what makes an ester. Um, so this is a three carbon carboxylic acid, so it's prop. And the ending, therefore, is anoic acid, which you've seen before when we did acids and bases. So that's the ending, uh, pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you're dealing with esters, the trick is that uh, there's actually two carbon chains that get broken up by this oxygen. It's the first example that we've seen of that. So when you name an ester, you have to name actually two different carbon chains. And so how it works is it's treated like this. Um, this group right here that I'm pointing at with my little arrow, um, if this were all by itself, if we ignored this thing on the right, this would be called ethanoate. When you take a carboxylic acid and you give away its uh, acidic proton, that H at the end that I'm pointing to here. So if this example on the left, if I got rid of that H, we would now call this thing propanoate. That's what the ion is called that's left behind uh, after we get rid of the hydrogen. So that's the system that gets used uh, when naming esters. So this thing over here just gets named as though it were like uh, an alkyl group, a little attachment, a side branch. So this is just called a methyl group. So there's the methyl in that top example. Uh, and then this part is called ethanoate, and it would be called ethanoate if it was by itself. So it's still called ethanoate here. So the whole thing is called methyl ethanoate. Notice there's no number on the methyl group because the methyl group is not on a carbon atom, so uh, it can't really get a number. Um, it's sticking off the oxygen. So if you see a molecule named ethanoate, and you know, therefore, it's an ester because of that ending, O8, uh, if there's a, a methyl or an ethyl in front of it, you know that that must be off of the oxygen on the other side. So notice that with three carbons, there's actually two different possible esters. And now I've, uh, I've switched, and so the, this is the part that has the C to O double bond. So that's sort of considered the parent part of the molecule. It only has one carbon, so that is meth, and then the ending anoate. So you've got methanoate for that part. So we've got the uh, carbon chain over here now, coming off of that single bonded oxygen that is too long, and therefore... This is an ethyl group. So we've got ethyl and methanoate versus methyl and ethanoate. You can see how this could get a little bit confusing, um, deciding which carbon chain uh, becomes the attachment and which one becomes 
the main group with the O8 ending. And the key is looking for the carbon that has both oxygens off of it. That's going to be the one that gets the uh, parent name. And the one coming just off the single bonded oxygen is going to be the attachment. So you don't have to number the functional group in an ester either. Um, it's kind of too challenging to name. So instead, you just give the length of both carbon chains that are involved. Um, the rest of this handout has some practice stuff that we'll look at in class. Uh, but for now, that covers uh, four new classes of organic compounds.